A lot of daily insulin management isn't exact because our lives aren't 100% predictable. We plan some things like celebrating a holiday with a big meal, but you don't wake up knowing what breakfast, lunch, and dinner you're going to have every single day or whether you're going to need to run to catch a bus. This unpredictability is why it's so important to build a habit of adjusting your blood glucose levels with bolus insulin or short-acting insulin. It's like when you're driving a car, you can't just use cruise control all the time. You need to balance the brakes and the gas as you go, especially in case of surprises. In general, your bolus insulin should make up around half of your daily insulin, but it's split up into small doses every time you eat to prevent a spike and if you want to correct a high blood glucose level. These doses won't be perfect all the time. Even a superhuman amount of math can't predict exactly how your body is going to react but you can try your best to adjust each dose to roughly match the food you're about to eat. It's especially important to pay attention to the carbohydrates in your food. Most of the carbs we eat are longer molecule chains that your body breaks down into simple sugars like glucose. A lot of staple foods, even if they don't taste super sweet, are packed with carbs. Yes, candy contains carbs, but so do grains, potatoes, kidney beans. You get the idea. And not all carbs are equal. Some get broken down faster, like a slice of cake, while others get broken down slower, like oatmeal. The rest of the non-carbs in your meal, such as proteins and fats, make a difference too. For instance, all the ingredients in a slice of pizza can collectively contribute to higher blood glucose levels, sometimes for hours. Knowing all that, it's easy to see why some people would try to skip bolus insulin altogether. It just seems so complicated. But building the habit and making small corrections is the best way to steer safely. If you're not used to estimating bolus doses for different size meals, it can help to start simply. Let's say you eat three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. To make sure your total bolus dose equals your total basal dose, your bolus insulin before each meal should be around one third of your basal insulin dose. Since you're not eating the exact same food three times a day, you can adjust your bolus doses by measuring your blood glucose before each meal and around two hours after each meal. These measurements will help you decide if the amount of bolus you took was a good match for the amount of food you ate and help you build that intuition. For most people, the target blood glucose range before each meal is between four to seven millimoles per liter. If your blood glucose is too high before you start eating, you can add in a correction dose of bolus insulin as well. Inevitably, your blood glucose will go up when you eat. But the goal of bolus insulin is to counteract that spike. So when you check your blood glucose levels two hours after eating, you don't want to be much higher than 10 millimoles. And ideally, you'll drop back into that target range of four to seven millimoles before you eat again. If you're not hitting these ranges, don't beat yourself up. Take it as an opportunity to learn about how your body reacts to the different amounts of foods or daily routines. There are a lot of things that can adjust, like how much you're eating at different meals or when you exercise. Maybe you misjudged how many carbs a meal contained or underestimated the impact of proteins and fats. Or maybe you didn't take your bolus dose early enough before eating. One day, taking bolus doses will become second nature but first, it's going to take some careful experimentation, and that is okay. If you want to dive in deeper, we've included some more resources in the video description about precise calculations like carb counting or corrections. Here are three helpful takeaways from this episode. Number one, build a habit of taking a dose of bolus insulin before every snack or meal and to correct a high blood glucose level. Number two, the total amount of bolus insulin you take in a day should match the total amount of basal insulin. And number three, adjust the amount of bolus based on how much food, especially carbs, you're eating. Measure your blood glucose levels before eating and around two hours after. Aim for four to seven millimoles per liter before and try to make sure you're not far above 10 millimoles per liter after. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this episode helpful.